top of the world and now I'm living And the good just gets better, keeps a giving Not even close to the end, it's just beginning Life is getting lighter while the days are getting brighter, yeah Hey, it's Ann Perry. Thanks so much for joining me today. Today we're going to be talking about what is your growth number. Now this is something I have not covered before and it is super easy to learn, super simple, but super powerful if you really want to know what the heck you're here for and what exactly are you supposed to be learning so that you'll get the most out of your life path. So this is going to be a simple tool you'll be able to use for yourself. You'll also be able to use it for your children, so your partners, anybody you're interested in and helping them to um, grow into whatever their uh, life purpose is. So let's take a look at how this works. How to calculate the growth number is very, very simple. We're going to calculate the value of all of the letters that are associated with your first published birth name, reducing this to a single digit or a master number. So say, for example, a um, person's name was um, Andrew John Edwards, okay, but he goes by John. That doesn't count. Andrew would count in that case, okay, so it's the first published birth name that we're looking at. So let's say in this particular case we're looking at somebody whose first published birth name is John. So we're going to look at our Pythagorean alphabet over here and we're going to see that each one of the letters vibrates at a different vibration. Okay? So for example, the A, the J, and the S vibrate at the vibration of the number 1. Likewise, B, Ks, and Ts vibrate at the vibration of the number 2. You get the idea. Pretty simple stuff, right? So the name John, the J, vibrates at the energy of the number 1. See that? So we're going to put a number 1 in here for J. The O vibrates at the vibration of the number 6. So we'll put the 6 over here. Uh, the H vibrates at the 8, and the N vibrates at the 5. So we add all those together and it comes up to 20. We're going to reduce it to a single digit. 2 plus 0 equals 2. Okay, let's do one again. Andrea, we know that the A vibrates at the vibration of the 1. The N vibrates at 5, the D vibrates at the 4, the 9 vibrates at the, uh, sorry, the R vibrates at the 9, um, the E vibrates at the 5, and the A vibrates at the 1. Add them together, 25, 2 and 5 equals 7. Now, if you have somebody um, whose birth name, first birth name, comes up as an 11, we're going to leave that alone. Likewise, if it comes up as a 22, we're going to leave that alone. Why? Because it's a master number. We have to acknowledge the intensity of the lessons relating to the master number. Okay, so what does the growth number actually mean? So the growth number describes the energy which will enlighten a person's experiences, okay, allowing them to have a better understanding of what it is they are here to learn. So you can consider it to be somewhat of a sub-lesson to the life path number. Okay, a um, little bit more intense than what the birthday number is actually. Okay, so the birthday number is also um, a sub-lesson to the life path number. But in this case, the growth number is sort of an overall theme that you might feel. So points to consider. So there's going to be subtle differences in, in the spelling of people's names. I found this really interesting. Um, and I only just recently figured this out, to be perfectly honest. I was named after my grandmother. My first name is Anne. It's spelled A-N-N. -N. Okay, my grandmother's name was Anne, but it was spelled A-N-N-E all this time. Almost 60 years, I thought it was spelled A-N-N. I mean, wouldn't that make sense? I was named after her? But no. Um, so in her case, um, A-N-N-E, which is how her name is spelled, comes up as the number 16. Okay, so in this case, 1 and 6 equals 7. But we also have to take note here that the 16 produces a karmic debt relating to lessons around trust. Who doggy did I ever get that? When I looked at that, I went, oh, I was so my grandmother. She had extreme issues with trust and... Um, she was extremely religious, so you know her faith was something that was very important to her. She was working through lessons regarding that. But when I looked at my name, the A, the N, and the N, of course it comes up as an 11, which explains finally why I have this passion for helping out Master Number 11s. I mean, I am a numerologist. I'm there for everybody. But I've always had this, this interest in helping the Master 11s, and I've never understood why, because as far as I knew, anywhere in my chart, there was no 11 that existed there until I looked at my growth number. So when I stepped into helping the master number 11s, when I started to specialize with the master number 11s, I found that my life just started to make sense and everything started to roll out and I just felt so satisfied with, with where I was going and what I was doing and my, um, my whole reason for doing numerology was starting to make more sense. And therein lies the power of the growth number. I'm not trying to make this about me, guys. I just wanted to show you there's an example of how this works. Even I didn't know my growth number was an 11 until I really looked at it. It, it was really, um, it really, really kind of, 
kind of shook me up a little bit to realize, hey, that's exactly why. Because everybody asks me, why do you specialize with the 11s? I don't know. I just do. Spirit asked me to, and so I do. But now I understand why. So let's take a look at all of the growth numbers. So if your growth number happens to be the energy of the number one, this means that you're here to learn how to be more independent, to consider other people's needs rather than just your own. The, the one number tends to be sort of all about you, and that's okay to a certain degree, all things in balance, right? But you need to learn how to express yourself with originality and learn how to be a leader without being dominant, okay? So there's a balance that has to exist between being um, an effective leader without the need to be the bully, okay? Without the need to sort of pound your chest and, you know, stomp on people like bugs to get ahead. So we want to make sure that we're learning balance there. When we come into the two growth number, this is someone who needs to learn how to promote harmony and balance, especially within relationships. They need to work on learning how to be a partner. Okay, now the two is made up of two number ones, right? So that double need for independence brings in um, the energy of the two. So the two says, I need to learn how to be a partner. But the two also has to learn how to um, consider their own needs, to express their own needs, and not to become the overgiver, the person that's always meeting everybody else's needs, right? We want to make sure that you've got balance in that regard. Um, twos tend to be people who are very, very sensitive. So the growth number implies that you need to learn how to work with that sensitivity, okay? So if that means um, learning how to be a little bit more diplomatic, um, a little maybe um, less dramatic, uh, maybe you're the kind of person who might use the, uh, the sensitivity as a bit of a weapon to make people kind of stay away from you, you know, create all kinds of drama so people can stay away from you. Um, so we want to make sure that you're establishing balance and harmony and learning how to work in partnerships if you're the number two and how to manage that sensitivity. The threes are here to learn how to be optimistic all the time, uh, to express themselves creatively, to resist that fear of rejection that the threes often have, and to learn how to manage all these social obligations that it, it generally entails, right? So the three is someone who's very expressive, who needs to just say, screw it, I'm just going for it, I'm just putting it out there. You know, they'll take a chance, they'll take a risk, and they always have to approach things with a very optimistic, joyful kind of perspective, okay? Always looking for the uh, the good in things, always kind of coming from that half full cup, if you will. The number four is have to maintain a positive uh, outlook rather than a restricted one. Remember, the four is all about four posts into the ground. Got to do it right. Got to do it on time. Got to do it, you know, within these boundaries kind of thing. So the four has to, has to kind of focus on um, what is right in their worlds rather than what is wrong. They have an incredible ability to focus, fours do. Um, and so, especially, you know, if you happen to have a four life path number, the, the growth number of the four is actually a good thing. Um, so you're going to focus on what is right rather than what's wrong. Remembering that anything we give our attention, energy, and focus to is going to get bigger. So why not focus on the stuff that you have completed or the things that you have done well rather than what is kind of a hang up or a limitation. So you want to view your obstacles as opportunities, opportunities to overcome them. Obstacles are not meant to go, be gone through. They're meant to go over them, right? Um, learn to be organized. Learn to focus on the satisfaction of being of service to other people rather than the difficulty of the job itself. The five needs to learn how to be flexible, how to be adaptable without scattering their energy. Okay, the five has a tendency to flip from thing to thing to thing because they just love life, right? They're seduced by life in general. They really enjoy... Um, different things. They get bored really easily. So the next best thing is the next best thing. Let's go for it kind of thing. So learning how to just be a little less scattered is a really good thing. Um, learning how to discern between what's a really good healthy um, activity for you that's going to help you to move forward um, rather than focusing on it because it's just kind of seducing you for now, right? seems like a good idea right now. Um, they need to learn how to um, finish what they start and maintain balance and limitation in all things, right? So those with a five growth number often have issues with regards to addictions, and that could be food, drugs, alcohol, gambling, whatever. So it's learning limitations in all things. The six needs to be to learn how to be of service to others. Remember that six got that round belly, right? That's a pregnant belly. It makes us think of the nurturer, the domestic side of life. So those who have the six um, growth number are here to learn how to accept responsibilities without resentment and to res resist the need for perfection. The six has a tendency to set the bar very high for themselves 
And likewise, they set the bar very high for everybody else. So again, learning balance. Remember that round bottom of the six, put that on a flat surface, it's going to rock, right? So the six is always learning balance in all things. So, and also resisting that temptation to be involved in family drama, okay? Because sixes have a tendency to kind of jump in there and, um, when they really might not need to be, okay? The sevens need to learn to trust their intuition. Uh, they need to have faith and surrender to a higher power. So developing um, a belief system in something outside of themselves is really important. The sevens are the thinkers, remember, the ones that are always in their head. So they have to learn how to express themselves and how they feel rather than how they think, okay? So um, learning how to express that is a really important thing. Learning to wait uh, with patience. <laughs> I, I laugh because I am a seven life path, as many of you know. So patience is not my virtue. I can't help it. I'm an Aries with a rising sign of, of um, Leo. So it's, you know, it's it's all, I, I know one speed and that's full speed ahead. So anyway, the seven is is learning to be a little bit more patient, to trust in spirit that things will roll out in the perfect timing. The eights need to learn how to make and spend and manage their money okay sometimes they'll feel that they have more money than they need sometimes they'll feel that they don't have enough money even though they do um, they have to really understand how far money goes um, they need to avoid the pressure uh, on them that says I have to make more money I'm not going to have enough kind of thing they need to uh, recognize that there is a huge relationship between money and power and authority right so they have to learn how to recognize that every day we teach people how to treat us and that creates our reality so if your reality isn't exactly what you want it to be, you need to be able to step out of that and look back in and go, huh, what am I doing to contribute to this? How come my reality sucks, <laughs> right? So what am I saying or what am I not saying that's implying it's okay to take advantage of me? So anybody with an eight growth number, it's not always just about the money. Quite often it's about how you stand in your own power to be seen, to be counted, to be heard. The nines have to learn to be of selfless service uh, with little expectation of anything in return. They just need to tap into their heart energy and to be the givers, okay? Um, they need to learn to give for the pleasure of giving, right? So it's taking, shifting all the energy away from their own satisfaction onto that of others. Um, they are the healers, they are the fixers, they are the ones that love to find solutions to things. So um, understanding that they, especially if you happen to be a one life path number with a nine growth number, this is a real call to you to kind of pull away from the need to always be number one in favor of being of service to everybody else, okay? The 11 um, is here to develop intuition and skills to be that of the spiritual messenger. They need to inspire people by example and use their own personal experiences to teach from. Boys, I, I, that, to me this is almost laughable because I've always done that, right? I, I've always felt that my vulnerability has been my strength. I share my stories with you guys because I feel why the heck would I go through this stuff if I wasn't meant to share them with you, okay? So um, this is, this is clearly what it is. And these are definitions that come from the work of Matthew Oliver Goodwin, who was a master numerologist back in the 80s. So he saw it before I did, clearly. Um, those of you with a 22 growth number, take insights and turn them into material things. You guys are the master builders who are intended to create something um, step by step that will empower and inspire uh, and be for the benefit of mankind. So, but when we look at the 22, we have to remember that the two twos that sit there say that I don't have to do this by myself. Yes, I have to build something that's going to help a bunch of people, but I don't have to do it by myself. I have to employ other people. I have to work collaboratively, collaboratively with them, that's a mouthful, um, in partnership to be able to get the job done. Okay, so there you have it. Okay, that's it. That was simple, Hank. Did you figure out what your growth number is? I sure hope so. If you want some more information, I've got a really great article on the growth number on my website. Just go to annperrynumerologist.com, uh, click on the blog, and you'll see a little article in there that says, what is your numerology growth number? If you need to contact me, I'm happy to be contacted. I'm at annperrynumerologist.com. I also have some free courses uh, on udemy.com, so you might want to check that out. And of course, I've got a really active Facebook group uh, and Facebook page on um, Facebook which is Ann Perry Professional Numerologist. I really hope that you'll subscribe today. Share this with anybody who might benefit. would really appreciate it. Looking forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Thanks so much. Take care. Have a great day. Bye for now.